okay, let's let's take on some of these questions and see uh, how how many of them we can do. Um, so these some of them are going to be pretty random, guys. Um, so I'd love to hear the three of you respond to Steven Pinker's unfair assessment of objectivism as Nietzschean. Um, so you know, Pinker said objective he is associated objectivist with Nietzsche. So is objectivism Nietzschean? No, but I don't. Re I don't uh, remember the details of what Pinker said about it. So uh, I don't want to comment on exactly his claims, but. Uh, it's often associated with Nietzsche, but it is not Nietzschean. Uh, Rand read Nietzsche when she was a young woman and liked certain things about him, but disliked others even from the beginning, in particular his uh, lack of belief in free will and his um, uh, extolling of the Dionysian irrationalist elements over the um, rational, all the stuff this uh, these Prager folks probably like. Um, and uh, so she had a kind of mixed relationship with him from the beginning, but she really appreciated the things that she liked in him, um, including the kind of individualism that she thought was there. And then as she developed intellectually and developed her own views, uh, she started to see more and more emphasis on reason as what's important and distinctive in life. And she started to see whatever things she shared in common with Nietzsche as uh, very minor and kind of matters of style and poetry. Um, you can, uh, there are some pieces on this in, in a companion to Ayn Rand, a, a piece by Lester Hunt on her developing view of him and some other pieces that address it. So if people are interested in the actual relation of her thought to Nietzsche's, that's a good place to look. Um, but when someone claims that someone is an Exian, you know, Rand is a Nietzschean or so-and-so is an Aristotelian or so-and-so is a Kantian, what's going on is the claim isn't necessarily that that person was following the other person. It, you, the person who's making the claim has a view about what the categories are and what the essential similarities and differences among thinkers are. And from his perspective, these views go together, whether or not the, the individual thinkers thought they did. And so we want to think about what does Pinker think about uh, Rand and about ethics, such that he wants to group Rand and Nietzsche together. And is he right about that? And is he how informed is he about Rand? And my sense is he's not very informed about that. Yeah. And it's too bad. It, it's so that to me it's it's too bad because I think of Rand as the philosopher of the Enlightenment in the sense it's the philosopher of the Enlightenment deserved and never got. Um, and he could learn a lot from if, if what the Enlightenment is grappling with and trying to have a view of that you can have abstractions that flow out of sense perception um, and that that's the essence of trying to understand reason and that you to understand political freedom you have to understand the issue of rights and where rights come from and they're not god-given and the kind of thing that the, the kind of rhetoric and more that you get in Locke and in the declaration about that in some sort of sense they have a supernatural source and if you're rejecting as pinker is the supernatural that will be like so where do rights come from she has a profound view about that and then that you have to question the issue of morality and not just take over christian morality and try to give a secular explanation for it um this is all sort of i think pr the project of the enlightenment which it does a lot of good work on but doesn't fully succeed and these are all the central issues she's interested in and has really new positions on so I think it's too bad that he just thinks of it as Nietzschean rather than this is a new view that's worth checking out. Yeah, and I don't know how much of the nonfiction he's read or if he's read the fiction. I, so I, I, I don't know, but I, my sense is he's ma mainly ignorant. And mainly also, there was um, an exchange between Pinker and um, uh, a objectivist or someone who's very influenced by Rand. I think would still call himself an objectivist, Rob. Rob Truszynski, and they did a podcast together where they talk about some of this. So uh, you can get a sense of how we'd respond um, to some of these kind of points if you if you find that. All right. So there... what we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, 
and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourronbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...